welcome to the Toffee Blues, your source for all things Everton. Uh, I'm here today, joined by Luke Garbutt, who's uh, recently left Everton. Uh, welcome to the show, Luke. Uh, pleasure to have you on. Uh, so, how's it been going here during lockdown? Have you been keeping fit yourself here, just training from home? Yeah, obviously it's been difficult um, sourcing sort of any weights or any or, or anything like that. So you've just got to improvise and do other things. But yeah, I've been ticking ticking along and uh, just doing the odd runs and, and all that type of thing. So uh, from that point of view, it's you know it's difficult, but uh, like any professional, you just need to try and keep on top of it. Really. Yeah, definitely. Are you uh, on the stage for the new club now as well? Obviously, just for, after your release from Everton, are you, are you uh, on the lookout for uh, what's, co- what's to come in the future as well? Yeah, obviously, with my contract being up uh, this summer, I've had to obviously focus on trying to get a new club. Um, and, yeah, really, it's, it's just a matter of waiting and, and seeing what my agent can get me. Um, I've come off the back of a good season with Ipswich um, so we'll just have to wait and see obviously with the, the lockdown period and the season's been uh, lengthened um, and and the season's next season being possibly starting in September there's still a lot of time in the transfer window left so it's still early days so um, from that point of view I've just got to maintain my fitness and then wait for that call really Yeah, that's true it's obviously a bit of a different transfer window uh, with what's happened financially to different clubs as well, but I'm sure you'll have uh, no problem finding a new club. Uh, just to go through a, f- a few of your stats, from Everton, obviously 11 years at the club, joined in 2009 from Leeds, uh, 12 first-team appearances, uh, one assist, uh, which signed for 600k from a tribunal. Uh, so how did your move to Everton come about? You were obviously with the Leeds youth team. Uh, when did you first hear of the interest and what made you choose Everton among other clubs that were interested? Uh, well, at the time, um, Leeds had offered me a deal when I was 16 to 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 be a YTS and then obviously um, sign professional forms. Um, and I decided to not to not take that option. Um, I had a couple of other offers um, from Premier League clubs at the time. Uh, Newcastle and Arsenal were obviously uh, in for me at the time as... Uh, as well as Everton, um, and I just felt as though Everton was the right fit for me at the time. Um, I supported Leeds um, ever since I was a kid when I joined the academy, uh, but they'd recently gone into League One, um, and I just felt as though, as a professional, you want to play at the highest level you can do and give yourself that opportunity. And I just felt that op- the opportunity at Everton was was the best one for me, so that's why I chose to to, to uh, come to Everton really. Yeah, it worked under like David Moyes, but before that, obviously you went in with the under 18s and 23s while you were representing England for a youth level as well. You work mm-hmm. with the likes of uh, some players like Shane Duffy, Eric Dyer, alone from Sporting. Uh, Ross Barkley was coming through, Mustafi. Uh, what was it like in the in the academy at that time playing with some of them players who've, who've gone on to have a really successful careers internationally? It was it was actually. Really, really good. To be fair, um, the competition for places, like you alluded to, all those players that have now gone on to have really, really good careers. Um, it, it was it, it was exciting times for for the youth team. We managed to win the league. We got to uh, to the Premier League Cup final twice, I think. Um, and although we didn't do quite as well in the Youth Cup, uh, we got to a quarter final, I think, one year. But uh, with that team and and the level of players we had at that time, I think we could have done better in, in the youth cup and that. But um, yeah, it was a pleasure to play with all those players, and and it, it made you a better player every day. Um, and obviously, they've all gone gone on to have really good careers. So uh, it was it was a pleasure to play with them, and um, obviously, it was good for Everton Football Club to have those type of young players coming through at the time. Obviously, not everyone managed to have. A successful career at Everton, but they've gone on and done other things, and uh, gone on to other clubs as well. Yeah, definitely, it was a good good use to set up at the time. Um, it still is obviously, but then after that, you got a, a loan to Cheltenham Town. That was your first loan away from Everton. How did that come about, and was that with the view of kind of um, getting some game time on the belt and coming back to play with the first team? 
But at that time, I was still a youth team player, academy product coming through. So at that moment in time, I was never really seen as potentially threatening the the, the first team. So like you like you said, it was more a case of just trying to get some league football under my belt and some experience. Um, it turned out to be a really good loan for me. Uh, we finished third. We got to the playoff final. Uh, it was a great experience for me. I learned a lot from it, um, and and it stood me in good stead for the for the next couple of years. But um, you know, I was never under consideration uh, uh, for Everton first team uh, uh, at that time. It was just a loan to try and get experience. Yeah, and then you ended up getting recalled, obviously, because uh, there was a couple of injuries. It was Brian Oviedo had a had a shock injury, and he uh, obviously came back and. Uh, Gone straight into the first team, really. Deleting Beans got injured not long after that, so you got a few opportunities in the 2014-15 season. Um, I think it was obviously made your debut in the League Cup, uh, second round, 5 0 win against Leighton Orient. What was it like coming back, making your debut at such a young age, and being thrust into the first team when you were needed? To be fair, it was off the back of the Colchester loan, so I'd, I'd gained a lot of experience through lower league uh, football, which stood me in good stead um, when the opportunity, opportunity arose. To, uh, to play some minutes in the first team. So, um, from that point of view, I was well sort of um, well rounded in terms of experience. Um, obviously, not at that level, but at some sort of level, um, a first team to be able to try and impact whenever I got the chance to do so. And uh, especially in that 14 15 season, uh, with those appearances that I made in Europe and a couple uh, in the Premier League, I felt as though I could kick on and, and be a part of Everton's first team for the years to come but um, for whatever reason that didn't happen um, and you know I've just I've had to learn and mature as a player and um, yeah really the, those experiences I, I can take them moving forward in the, in the next chapter of my career Yeah definitely uh, obviously 11 years you must have learned a lot during that time at your club uh, and since yeah, break through as well. Everton have had quite a few managers, so maybe that's why it's it's been a bit difficult as well to try and establish yourself. But when you obviously came into the team, it was David Moyes as the manager. What was it like working under him? Yeah, what was he like as a manager? Well, I've I've been asked that question a lot, really, to be honest. Um, at that time, there was an element of stability and consistency at the football club, and that's what David Moyes gave. Um, the the first team were doing really well on a consistent basis. You know, they were you know, sort of sixth, seventh, and then they got the odd uh, season where they finished fifth, and then they got that one season where they uh, got into the Champions League places. So the football club was in good hands at that at that moment. Obviously, he moved on to Manchester United, um, and uh, Roberto Mar came in. So, um, but looking back at Moise, it was it was uh, a period of consistency and solidarity at the, at the football club, really. Yeah. yeah, obviously Martinez came in as well, and you got some opportunities under him as well. And um, I've seen interviews in the past when you've said he's kind of like he just encouraged you to express yourself on the pitch. Uh, what was it like working with him? Because he's I think he's a very different manager to David Moyes. So what was it like um, making that change and working under him compared to David Moyes? Well, from my personal point of view, uh, it was totally different. So I was a young player coming through the academy under Moy, so I didn't really get to work with him on a day-to-day -day basis. I wasn't part of the first team. So when people allude to the Moyes type question, it I can't really answer it because he didn't work with me that much. Whereas Martina, because I got him and I had a couple of seasons where I was properly part of the first team squad, got my appearances and felt a part of the first team. So um, from that point of view, Martinez gave me the platform and the confidence to be able to go and try and express myself and try and get myself into the first team. Um, so I've got nothing but praise for for him uh, to give me that opportunity. But um, yeah, so uh, in terms of the two managers, I can't give you a balanced sort of uh, assessment because under Moyes, I was just an academy player who would get the odd chance to go and train with the first team, whereas under Martinez, I was training every day with the first team. I was part of the first team squad. I was in the changing room. So it was a totally different kettle of fish, really. Yeah. What was it like being part of that team as well? Because obviously that was the season where you were making appearances in the Europa League and 
you're playing with players like obviously Romelu Lukaku, Samuel Eto came to the club at that time as well. You're playing with some top players. Uh, what was it like to be around the dressing room at that time with the positivity about Everton being back in Europe, obviously doing well under Martinez, especially in the first season? What was it like being part of that dressing room? Um, as you can imagine, it was, you know, it was confident. It was uh, buzzing. Um, there was players playing with loads of confidence. Uh, the manager at that time instilled a style of play that was go out and express yourself you know a possession based football um, so the lads really enjoyed it and obviously that reflected in the results especially in the first season where we finished fifth um, we got ourselves back into Europe we had a good stint in Europe as well um, obviously things didn't end the way we wanted to uh, but like I've alluded to in other interviews and stuff I felt at that time we were, uh, we were. I think we were ready, and we were equipped to to possibly get some silverware, and we just didn't manage to do it, which is something that, on reflection, was disappointing because I think the fans and everybody connected with the football club felt as though we were on the right path to be able to achieve something special, um, and it just didn't quite happen, really. Yeah, definitely. It's been too long, like literally 1995 since Everton last won a trophy. And it's a shame because that was such a talented squad that you can go on and um, win some silverware at that point. But yeah, at that time, you were uh, you were tipped to be Leighton Baines' successor. Uh, similar playing style. I noticed the guy that it was like watching watching you come through. It was like it was it was like watching a younger Baines. It was like um, obviously whipping uh, like from perfect crosses from the left. and it, it was it was very similar the playing style. So how much inspiration did you draw from him, and how much how much did you base your game on him at that point? Oh yeah, it was massive. Like learning off somebody of his quality, um, it was a massive help to me. And and l- like you said, the way in which I played was very similar to the way he played. Uh, you know, very attack minded, uh, my delivery. I focused on that a lot, uh, and. Yeah, he was a great mentor for me, like on and off the pitch. He's, he's a top guy. Uh, everybody loves him in the squad. Um, so, from that point of view, I've got nothing but, you know, good words to say about Leighton Baines, really. And, and I just try to learn off him every day in training and, and try and, whenever I got the opportunity to play similar to him, but then also put my mark up on it to try and impress the manager so that I could get more games. But, um, to play behind someone like him, you're not going to get that opportunity that much. So um, learning off him was invaluable for my time at Everton, really. Yeah, it must have been frustrating not to get the game time, but at the same time, obviously learning off a player like that must be uh, invaluable, I just said. But uh, yeah, at the, end of, at, at the end of that season, your contract was running out and there was, uh, there was quite a few clubs rumoured to be interested in you, yeah, the likes of Liverpool even. And um, Bournemouth as well. Was there anything in those rumours or was that just paper talk? Yeah, there was a little bit of paper talk. There was a little bit of... Uh, yeah, it, it, was, it wasn't It was really on the cards, to be honest with you. Uh, it was just all hype um, at the time. There was clubs interested uh, in taking me. Um, but at that time, there was things going on behind the scenes um, and all that type of thing that I needed to sort out. Um Leighton had obviously got injured at the back of that season and there was two or three games left. Uh, and I was still in negotiations with trying to sign my deal. Um, but all I wanted to do was play and get the opportunity to play. But obviously, I don't think the manager and the football club were willing to let me play if I hadn't have tied myself down to the, to the football club. So we had a little bit of disagreements on that. Um, and he decided to play Brendan Galloway ahead of me uh, for the last few games of that season, um, which was frustrating for me. So, um, we, we obviously ironed it out in that summer. I went off to play for England, um, signed my five-year deal with the um, confidence of going out on loan. We agreed that, me and the club. Um, I had something agreed with the, with the Premier League club to go on a season on loan, and that got... Uh, broken down 
at the last minute and they decided to that, that club decided to sign a permanent transfer uh, and then from that moment on it was you know a little bit uh, difficult because I rushed into the Fulham loan and on reflection I should have maybe took a little bit of time out to just kind of figure out where my next club was going to be or whether I was going to remain at Everton really yeah yeah, I've seen you talk about that a little bit in the, your interview with The Athletic a couple of months ago where you were saying about Bournemouth and, uh, and them signing Tyro Mings on a, on a, on a permanent uh, just as they were looking. And you, I think you said you'd spoken to Eddie Howe and that was all in place. How, how frustrating was that considering it was all in place and it was just about to go through and then the last minute they just pulled the plug? Like, What was that like? Was it, was that, must have been a massive blow. Oh, yeah. That, that's the thing. I, I can't really describe how that feels because... You come off the back of playing for your country in the under twenty ones, like you're on a high, thinking I'm buzzing for the for the next season, and the potential of playing in the Premier League, um, for for a different club, and for that to get taken away is a huge blow. Um, so, for me personally, it, it probably knocked me a little bit, and then I rushed probably going to Fulham um, because obviously I agreed with Everton that I was going to go out on loan that season to get more game time um, and on reflection it was something that I didn't think about enough I just went and signed for Fulham and then um, and, and then that was it really I, I got injured the final game of the, the pre-season a week before the season started which didn't set me off on the right foot and then coincided with me uh, having a bit of a uh, tough season with uh, with Fulham, so it wasn't the best of times, really. Yeah, you played twenty six times that season, so like you got several opportunities. Obviously, there's a lot more games in that in the championship season. Uh, what was it like at Fulham that season? Kind of what what um how could it have been better? Like what what, what went wrong it, um, from your perspective? Um, it was probably a mixture of a lot of things, really. Like, like I just said, uh, I didn't start off on the on the right foot because I got injured straight away. So then I was out for the first sort of two or three months of the season, and then I was, you know, fighting to get match fit. But then I also wanted to try and get in the team. They were trying to get me in the team straight away. Um, and then when and then when I did get on the pitch, I wasn't playing well enough. Um, you know, I was inconsistent. There'd be some games where I'd have played okay and then there'd be the other times where I'd have played not so great. Um, that coincided with the with the team not actually doing very well itself. You know, there was, there was at that time, I think they'd just come down from the Premier League, so there was a huge expectation um, on the club to try and gain promotion again. So, you know, it, it was a bit of... There was huge turmoil at the club. Um, the manager had left in the November. Then we got a caretaker manager in, and then another manager came in in the January. So there was a lot of things going around the football club at that time. Don't get me wrong, that's not a reflection on how I performed or whatever like that. But, but I can hold my hands up and say, like, I didn't deliver for Fulham. But there was uh, various factors that didn't help the situation for me personally. And... and and that's how I can sum it up, really. Like mentally, I wasn't prepared from the offset. Then I got injured. Then I got a loss of form. And I was too inconsistent. So that's that's my full and long sort of summed up, really. Yeah, it's obviously difficult for a for a young player trying to trying to break through at a club that's just a bit all over the place as well. So it's it's kind of like uh, down to the club a little bit as well. It must have been it must have been difficult. But yeah, yeah, quite a few loans followed after that, and um, it's interesting because. I was speaking to uh, Apostol Osvelios about this and he said when he came, he was told to go out on loan and he didn't. He chose to stay and fight for his place and he regrets that. But uh, when you when you spoke to the Athletic, he said you may have been too forceful in going out on loan sometimes. And uh, Did you ever think you should have stayed at Evan and fought for your place or was it kind of agreed that you would be going out on these loans? No, like every player's situation is different. So, yeah. you know, the club will assess that player and then, you know, put them on a pathway accordingly so uh, my, I, 
I took a decision after the 14, 15 season that like, you know, I was itching to play and be a part of a first team, which I was at Everton, don't get me wrong. Like I was fully a part of the first team, but I wanted to be a first choice playing every week and getting the experience uh, to then really sort of push late in the following season to try and get in the team. So I felt as though I needed a platform to be able to go and play, you know, 30, 40 games. Um, and then the go from there. Um, so from my, my, I was still a young player. I was still sort of earning my stripes, as it were, at Everton. Um, and, you know, I don't really, I, I try not to look back and, and say, well, if I did that, I would have been in a better position, blah, 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 blah. But, um, from from that point of view, as soon as the first loan deal didn't work out and I went straight over to Fulham straight away, that's something I do think about and on, on reflection, I should have took a little bit more time and thought, you know what, I, I could have stayed at Everton and, and, and tried to fight for my place um, again that following season. Yeah. You know, funnily enough, Baines, Baines got injured and then obviously... Galloway played all those games, so it it was sods lower at that time. Yeah, that must have been frustrating as well, because a lot of fans uh, kind of knew that you were a better option as well. I personally would have, would have rather to have you in the team as a like for like replacement for Baines rather than Galloway, who's a little bit of a different player. Uh, mm-hmm. And I didn't really see a future uh, mm-hmm. for him. Well, that was annoying anyway. But yeah, um, obviously you heard the news of Roberto Martinez who's sacking uh, not long after that. Uh, how did that affect you? Did you think that was going to change your kind of chances at Everton? Was that was that going to affect your opportunities at Everton? Uh, hearing of the second of Roberto Martinez. Yeah, it was something that I was uh, a little bit disappointed at because I knew he knew what I could do. So with a new manager coming in and him you know, bringing new ideas and, and new thoughts on how he sees the squad. I didn't know whether I was going to come back in at, off the back of a bad loan at Fulham to go straight into the first team squad again. So I was a bit nervous about that. And then it obviously transpired that uh, that didn't work out, which on reflection was really, really disappointing because, you know, from my point of view, the club had invested in a five-year deal in me and okay, I didn't deliver for Fulham on that loan, but I was still young enough to, you know, to to improve and develop as a player. And I thought if he was to give me that opportunity, I would have been able to deliver for Everton. But uh, I remember we went to Austria in the first week of pre-season when Ronald Koeman was in charge. And uh, we'd finished that, that Austria trip and we was on our way back. And we got off the coach at Finch Farm and he just basically told me that all well, the internationals are coming back next week and you're not part of my plan, so you're going to have to train with the reserves. Yeah. And this was when all the lads were literally getting off the bus, getting the bags and all that. And I just was like, wow, this is this is crazy, this, because like, you didn't even have the courtesy to, to kind of pull me privately into your office and have a conversation about it. You've, we literally come off the bus, you pulled me to one side and told me this. I just felt a little bit disrespected. And, you know, don't get me wrong, you know, managers make decisions on players all the time. And I could have taken it if he went about it a different way. But just the way he did it, I just felt it was a bit, you know, muggy, if you know what I mean. So, um, from that moment on, I felt as though I was done at Everton Football Club, which was a real shame, really. And I was constantly just, I don't know, like a commodity, like someone that was there, but not really there, not valued by the football club, which was hard to take. You know, it, it had a massive effect on me mentally and stuff. And I've, I've, from that moment on, I've always had to try and constantly build those bridges in my confidence and my mentality. Yeah, that's a massive shame because... I've heard a lot of stories of Ronald Koeman being like that, kind of being just, just frank and just being 
often rude, to be honest, in a, in a lot of situations. And it's a shame that young players like yourself are affected by that uh, mentally as well, which is because it could have, it, it was probably plenty of players who were, were affected by this kind of ruthlessness like that, which is a massive shame. Uh, obviously, uh, you, you went out on loan after that as well. What was it like uh, under the next few managers, kind of? I know you didn't get the chance to work with the likes of Allardyce and Marco Silva, but did you have any contact with them while you were um, during your loans, or was it was it kind of just uh, didn't speak to them? No, the um, the Marco Silva situation was I was totally frozen out. I never really had much contact with, with him at all, and then came back to the club. I, I then came back to the club. Um, under Sam Allardyce and I managed to train with the team a lot more uh, under him and I felt as though that I was going to possibly get a, an opportunity again but that didn't materialise um, but yeah but under Sam Allardyce it was it was okay um, I didn't really agree with some of the things he came out publicly and said about me which I felt again was a little bit below the belt but um, in terms of his coaching staff and the way they, they went about things it was it was completely fine um, so yeah that, that 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 was the way things went with both them managers really um, and then um, I, after Sam Allardyce had finished that season I'm, I went on loan to, to Oxford because I knew at that point that I had no future left that was basically last chance saloon and it didn't work out so I wasn't going to get another opportunity to to try and perform in the first team so I went went off on a loan again yeah yeah I've been um, I've been doing the loan reports for the Toffee Blues so I've been like keeping an eye on how we've been getting on every week and that and uh, started doing them when you were at Oxford and obviously you watched the Ipswich as well and it's kind of like you've been moved around a, a little bit like you've, you've you've been at left back sometimes at left mid sometimes at left wing back sometimes uh, is it annoying that you've been kind of switched around a little bit and you haven't been able to settle in one position uh, or were you alright with that kind of thing um, well it all stemmed from the Oxford loan really because we started off the season as a team and, and as an individual uh, really really poorly and then the second half of the season it totally changed and I was, I was just kind of, I don't know, I was just scratching to try and find some form, some sort of, I don't know, like some form of consistency. Um, and the manager just stumbled on me, possibly saying, well, you know, you're really good going forward. Your qualities are good going forward. We'll try you further forward, uh, left midfield. So I said, yeah, I'm open to that. Um, so he, start, he started playing me uh, left wing. And I started assisting and scoring some goals and finding some consistency in my performance. So I was happy to do that for the team. Um, and it coincided with us getting some really good results. And then um, the Ipswich uh, loan was was really, really positive for me. Um, you know, the, the club had been really, really good towards me. Uh, I played basically every game that I was fit. Um, you know, it's a great club, good fan base um, in the wrong division. Um, but, yeah, I really enjoyed my time at Ipswich. Um, and, and alluding to the positions, I, I played everywhere down the left for them. Um, and I'm happy to do that because, you know, I've had success in all three of those positions, really. So I'm not really bothered as long as I'm playing um, and affecting the team and the performance then I'm not really bothered where I play, really. Yeah, and you know, I've been, you've been, you've been in the Ipswich side and it's been good watching you have a, have a strong season. Obviously, you've had uh, six goals, three assists and some beautiful free kicks this season. Gorgeous crosses whipping into the box. It's good to see your quality is um, properly shining through. Probably your best loan spell since you've uh, since you joined your time at the club. Uh, so, do you reckon you could return there in the future or are you looking at different opportunities? Possibly, yeah. I mean, it was a good fit for me. Um, the the club, it's a great club. Um, I really enjoyed my time there, so I would never ever rule that out in the future. Um, but like any player, any professional player, you want to try and play at the highest level you can do. Um, so, 
you know, for me, it's just something that my agent will continue to, you know, sort my future out uh, this summer and we'll go from there, really. I can't really comment on where I'm going to be or what I'm going to do. Um, all I can say is positive things about Oxford and uh, Ipswich, really. Yeah. Um, I've gained confidence and, um, you know, a real form of consistency and solidity in my performance uh, through those two loan spells and gained a lot of experience off them two loan spells as well. Yeah, they definitely set you up well for the future, wherever that ends up. But um, yeah, something that's um, popped up over the last few days, you know, you're active on Twitter over it, the Carlo Ancelotti press conference. Uh, I was I was quite surprised when they asked the question, obviously, but uh, yeah, he, what was that all about? Like, has, has, has Carlo ever been in contact with you or was that, was that kind of just like... Uh, no, no, was... I mean, listen, like, Carlo Ancelotti isn't going to know who I am because of my situation uh, I've been on loan a lot of the time at the football club uh, he'd only just come in in January so you know from that point of view it's not kind of um, any negligence on his part it's more to do with the club he should have been briefed that there's three players out of contract this summer uh, um, and that's it really then he would know that I was a player at Everton and then when the question was asked then he could just answer it but obviously he wouldn't know who I was and he didn't get briefed so then it looked a bit disrespectful towards me but I chose to see the funny side to it um, and yeah that, that that's all I can say about the situation really Um and it just absolutely blew up on, on social media, which was funny. Yeah. The lads in our group chat were saying it's going to make for a good um, welcome video wherever you end up. I'm sure uh, they'll, they'll probably make the most of that as a media opportunity. Yeah. Um, but no, that was that, that was good. But yeah, uh, yeah, who is it kind of who's in contact with you then? Is, is it is it Marcel Brands who runs the loan side of things at the club? Is, is it him you've been in contact with or is, 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 it, is it run separately to Marcel Brands? <laughs> No, yeah, Marcel Brands has been in touch a couple of times. Um, in terms of the loan, the loan, uh, the loans that I've had. So yeah, he sorts all that side of it out. Um, and yeah, it, it's it's just one of those things. I've I've gone and tried to pursue my career at different clubs. Um, and yeah, I mean, it, it's it's strange. Like I don't. I don't have any sort of animosity or anything towards the football club, but I just feel as though things could have been dealt with a little bit, and and that's as far as I'm gonna I'm gonna take that really. But in terms of uh, the clubs um, pursuing loans and 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 with the players etc., Marcel Brand sorts that out really. Yeah, true. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure if there was more stability at the club, I, that's my personal opinion, I think you would have got more of a chance at the club, but because it was all up in the air, that's kind of uh, spoiled things a little bit. Um, mm. Because Everton's had a severe lack of stability over the last, since Moyes left, really, as we as we alluded to before. But yeah, uh, I'm going to ask you a few qu- final questions, put you on the spot a little bit, if that's all right. Uh, so, first one is, who is the best player you played with during your time at Everton? Well, I got asked that question the other day on uh, on another podcast that I've done. Um, I, w- I would have to say between Leighton and uh, Stephen Pina, so training with them was a joy, really. Like their link up was just unbelievable, even even in training and obviously on match days when you guys would watch them. Um, it was no coincidence that a lot of our creativity and a lot of our attack started from the left. Because their their link up was so good, um, there were obvious, there was obviously some talented players within that, um, you know Ross, Romelu, obviously like Savani at some at one point. So there's plenty of talent in there, but those were the two standout players for me. Yeah, especially as a left side, the player as well must have been an inspiration to you. Um, but yeah, do you still speak to any of the players or just from time at Everton? Like, do you reckon you'll keep in touch with uh, a lot of them? Um, not really, no. 
uh, because it's been such a long time that I've not been involved day to day with the football club and a lot of the sort of the 14, 15 team that I was involved with have, there's only Seamus and Bainsey left really so from that point of view changed the squad's completely changed so you know I do I do know a lot of people inside the football club but in terms of playing wise now I've not really kept in contact with anyone yeah yeah that's down to the lack of stability in the in the in the club as, as well as we were saying before unfortunately um, but yeah what are your overall memories of Goodison Park and the Everton fans uh, uh, there's loads like the fans were nothing but good to me you know what I mean like the an unbelievable set of fans uh, they deserve some form of silverware in the years to come and I, and I wish them all the success really uh, I'll continue to follow the football club it was a massive part of my life uh, um, and yeah the, all I can say is good things about the Everton fans really yeah mm-hmm. and uh, another one on, your spot, on, on the spot again what's your, what's the, your best memory of your time at Everton um, well I'd obviously I would, there's two obvious standout ones really like my uh, uh, my Premier League debut at St. James's Park um, and European appearance at Wolfsburg away um, was another standout. So those are the two, I'd say, stand out to me the most. Yeah, definitely. Big nights, big European nights you're involved in must have been, must have been class. Um, but yeah, finally, do you have a, a final message that you want to say to the Everton fans about your time at the club at all? Um, not really, no. But uh, just like I said to you before, like, the fans have been nothing but good to me. Um, I wish the club nothing but success in the future. Um, it's a brilliant football club, and um, yeah, I, I really, really enjoyed my time there. Obviously, there was many ups and downs, um, but my journey was was an interesting one, to put it to put it lightly, like yeah. Long journey, long and interesting journey, and um, I'm sure if it weren't for the instability of the club, it would have been uh, different. But yeah, we wish you all the best for the future. I, I, um, we'll be keeping tabs on you on, on how you get on in uh, your next club, and we wish you all the best. And I'm sure after a successful season at Ipswich, then you'll uh, you'll you'll have a bright future um, ahead of you for next season. So all the best for that as well. So uh, thanks a lot for joining us.